back again with more Shadowlands. Hi, hey everyone. Uh, so welcome back. We just got a uh, another update today. The Shadowlands class update literally just went live. I have not even read this article yet, uh, but I wanted to jump into it as soon as we could and uh, and go over some of the philosophies and stuff that they have for the deep pruning. So as you guys know, in Shadowlands, uh, they said that they were going to look at the classes and deep prune a lot of them, meaning add some abilities uh, that are classic staples for that class um, and, and, and put those back in after the great the great pruning that happened uh, a few expansions ago. So uh, today I want to jump right into it um, and, and go over this. So I know there's a lot of content coming out right now, and I know these talking head videos probably aren't the best, uh, but right now it's pre-alpha. This is the earliest look we can possibly get at these things, and I want to cover them and, uh, and see how things progress and change throughout this alpha process. So uh, let's jump right into it. As Azeroth's champions prepare to traverse into the Shadowlands, they will gain powers both new and forgotten to take on horrors that reside in the realms of death. Uh, okay, cool. Sounds awesome. Uh, Shadowlands class philosophy. So this is the part that I'm very curious about. I want to see kind of where the dev team is heading um, in these regards. So and classes have evolved throughout WoW's 15 years of development, and so have our philosophies on class design. With new expansions and an increasing level cap came new spells, abilities, and talents. While earning new powers is exciting and a natural part of growth in a role-playing game, eventually we began to butt up against the limit of action bar and accessible keybind space, and many of the tools and perks that had once defined certain classes became increasingly widespread, diminishing class uniqueness. To address this in the past, we made changes to talents with Mr. Pandaria, uh, and even removed several abilities in Warlords of Draenor. In Legion, alongside the introduction of artifact weapons, we focused on class identity and carving out a distinct fantasy for each specialization to go along with their weapon. Mechanically, this meant revamps to most of our specs, removing several long-standing class-wide abilities, and adding new spec-specific abilities in the process. Today, in Battle for Azeroth, while specialization have unique and flashy abilities, we've heard feedback that in some cases, we've moved too far away from the core of the class that initially sparked players' interest when they first created that character. At times, there is more that divides two specializations of the same class than there is that unites them. I would totally agree with that. Um, yeah, with, with certain, in, in certain respects, right? With Paladins not, all Paladins not having Consecrate baseline, right? Something like that. In Shadowlands, we want to return to the idea that a specialization is about powering up a specific part of a class's spec, uh, or a class's kit, not narrowing down their tool set. And in an expansion that is all about choice. Ooh, I like it. Uh, we also want to give players some opportunities to make impactful choices to customize their gameplay and express their own vision of how their characters engage in combat. Awesome. Uh, many spec-specific abilities and spells that help define the identity of a class will once again be available class-wide, and we're reintroducing some iconic abilities to give all of Azeroth's heroes a fighting chance against the dangers ahead. Players will have their new Covenant class abilities to look forward to, which I went over in a previous video. If you haven't checked that out, the link will be in the description uh, so you can see what's going on there. Uh, yeah. Uh, today, we'd like to give you a look at some of what's in store for each class, including our overall goals, some cool new and returning powers, and some key changes to abilities and talents. This isn't meant to be a comprehensive list of update. These changes represent a starting point for a dialogue. Awesome. Cool. Uh, so the first one that we're going to look at, this is going to go down in alphabetical order. I'm assuming this is going to take a little bit of time to get through. Uh, so skip around if I am talking about a class that you don't give a shit about. Uh, so Death Knights, former champions of the Lich King, Death Knights overwhelmed their foes with brute force and dark magic. In Legion, Death Knights became very, na very narrowly focused thematically around their spec. Frost Death Knights having overwhelming majority of their spells be Frost themed only. In Shadowlands, we are unifying the core Death Knight kit by restoring many abilities back to all specs, including popular utility options from the past. So let's go into general changes. Once these changes are live, all Death Knights will be able to desecrate the ground around them with unholy magic to deal damage to their ally, uh, to their enemies, to their allies, uh, with death and decay, or neutralize their attacks with anti-magic zone. Perfect. All DKs should have that. Furthermore, every Death Knight will once again be able to tap into unnatural powers to temporarily turn themselves undead with Lichborn, or use Raise Dead to summon a ghoulish servant to fight alongside them. The new Sacrificial Pact ability, this is new, 
uh, enables Death Knights to perform a forbidden ritual, sacrificing one of their undead minions, siphoning their health and causing them to explode and deal damage to nearby enemies. Uh, like the the Warcraft 3 uh, uh, characters. So I, I I love that they're they're introducing the, the Death Pact. I think that's going to be super cool. Uh, finally, the Frosty Grasp of Chains of Ice will once again bind the enemies of all Death Knights. So these these are great. Uh, just little, little general changes that I think make a DK more fun to play just in general, right? Doesn't matter what spec you are. At home in the Shadowlands and amongst their fellow dead, Blood Death Knights can learn new abilities and talents. Blood Tap allows Death Knights to consume essence from slain enemies to generate one rune. It is repeatable whenever a Bone Shield charge is used. Wow. We'll also get Rune Tap without needing to select it as a talent. Good, good, good. Relish in Blood will significantly heal those bloody bruisers for each active Bone Shield charge and grant five runic power when Death and Decay is cast while Crimson Scourge is active. Nice. I'm assuming that's probably a talent. Uh, for Frost, Memories of the Lich King's legendary sword, Frostmourne, stirs the hearts of Frost Death Knights who can again choose between two one-handed weapons or one two-handed weapon to cut down their foes. That is amazing. That means that two-handed Frost Death Knights are back. Yes! Uh, the harsh lessons learned on Frozen Tundra of Northrend have manifested into new abilities and talents. The iconic, iconic Frostworm's Fury will be accessible to all Frost Death Knights rather than needing it to be selected as a talent. Hypothermic Presence is a new talent that halves the runic power cost of abilities for a moderate amount of time, giving the Death Knight the Viger, Virger, I never know how to say that word, uh, to strike down all who stand against them. That's awesome. Uh, a big, a big defensive, uh, a big offensive cooldown. Feels good to me. Unholy. While all Death Knights have some ability to control and reanimate undead minions, an unholy Death Knight has chosen to specialize necromantic magic, and their abilities should reflect that. All unholy Death Knights will be able to use Summon Gargoyle uh, to bring these ter flying terrors to their side. Army of the Damned returns as an even stronger force with a familiar and faithful recruit, a Magus of the Dead. These formidable magic wielders have fought side by side with Maldraxxus Bannermen and their presence rallies on Holy Death Knight's ghoulish armies, lobbing Frostbolt and Shadowbolt spells into the enemy. Awesome. Uh, Death Coil and Epidemic Casts will reduce Army of the Dead's cooldown, allowing uh, Unholy Death Knights to summon forth a relentless stream of monstrosities into battle. Magus of the Dead will also fight by a Death Knight's side when they cast Apocalypse, which also benefits from a cooldown reduction whenever Death Coil and Epidemic are cast. Unholy Death Knight's Mastery Dreadblade will benefit both Master and Servant by also increasing the Death Knight's shadow damage and the damage of their ghoulish minions, allowing undead armies to trample all in their wake. Unholy sounds super fun. Super fun. Now, of course, all of this is subject to change, so please keep that in mind uh, as we go through that. Uh, Demon Hunters, which is a hard one to deprune, right? Uh, so I'm assuming that we're not going to see too much here. Uh, Demon Hunters were originally added in Legion at a time when all characters were assigned a specialization at creation, and artifact weapons made each spec feel almost like its own class, and that's reflected in the Demon Hunter's design. Though there are a number of similarities between Havoc and Vengeance, we feel we can do more to create some common ground, such as sharing a single resource and certain abilities. Um, okay. I, I kind of called this, actually, for those of you that have seen the Covenant Abilities Overview, um, there was, uh, the wording of something made it sound like that was what they were going to do. Uh, all Demon Hunters now share a single resource, Fury, which channels their fiery hatred into relentless demonic attacks on their enemies. In addition, Immolation Aura, uh, will be available to both specs. Cool. Havoc Demon Hunters have a new passive, Unending Hatred. <laughs> of course they do. Uh, which expands their Fury's maximum capacity, letting them get in an extra hit or two. Uh, nice. And that's just passive. They just get that. They don't have to talent into it. Uh, the Dark Slash talent has evolved into Essence Break, which deals Chaos damage and significantly increases the damage that both Chaos Strike and Blade Dance deal for a short duration. Nice. So a little, a little uh, window there, uh, like a Colossal Smash window. Vengeance Demon Hunters will see changes to Soul Cleave and their talents to encourage more build variety outside of Spirit Bomb. This includes getting Demonic as a talent option. Okay. And Fell Devastation as part of their specialization's baseline abilities, so Demon Hunters can dish out more destruction than ever before. Ah! So they want tanks to do more... Nice! Similar to their Havoc brethren, Vengeance Demon Hunters who choose Demonic will temporarily enter their metamorphosis form following a fell devastation. That, yes. 
please make tanks more offensive. Like, that, that sounds great to me. Uh, Vengeance talents as a whole have been substantially reworked. We've combined several popular talents, shuffled others to different locations, and introduced new talents to encourage new build possibilities. One such talent is the new Bulk Extraction which immediately rips a soul fragment for, from up to five enemies around the Demon Hunter and consumes them. For situations that call for the Vengeance Demon Hunter to take a hit or two, Ruinous Bulwark, which is a talent, increases the healing of their fell devastation and converts overhealing into absorption shield that lasts for a moderate amount of time. So the more offensive you are, the more defensive you are. The... Yeah, I'm into it. <laughs> All right, for Druids. Druids are the master of shape-shifting, in case you uh, weren't aware. Let me move that just a little bit here. Um, sorry, the video keeps getting out of focus. Uh, all druids will be able to use Ferocious Bite, Bark Skin, Cyclone, Stampeding Roar, and Iron Fur, regardless of their active specialization. Druids of any specialization will now be able to use Cyclone and Stampeding Roar. In addition, Heart of the Wild has returned as a talent, providing an option for druids who want to use an off-roll abilities during combat. That's awesome. Druids of any spec will now be able to use Cyclone and Stampeding Roar. We don't need to go into, into talent. That, a, any Druid being able to use Stampeding Roar sounds awesome to me. Uh, the affinity talents associated with each spec also gain an additional utility ability. Balance receives Typhoon. Uh, Feral... Oh. Feral gets Maim. Guardian gets Incapacitating Roar. And Restoration can use Ursul's Vortex. So they're moving that... So th those aren't baseline now. Uh, uh, Ursul's Ursul's vortex isn't baseline for resto. I'm I'm kind of confused by the wording wording of this one. Uh, for balance, solar and lunar empowerments are being strengthened and updated into eclipses, reminiscent of past expansions like Wrath of the Lich King. Wrath and Starfire will will grant each other alternating lunar and solar eclipses for a longer duration, with special moments of celestial alignment allowing both to occur at once. Balanced Druids who master the flow of these eclipses will be able to ensure a period of sustained power to either Wrath or Starfire at key moments of a fight. Star Surge will extend the current eclipse to continue focusing power into either Wrath or Starfire, while Starfall uh, instead extends your current Moonfire and Sunfire effects, giving the main arcane power spenders distinct roles based on situations. That's great. Uh, making Starfall be a little more useful for, for some people sounds like a, sounds like a, good, a good call to me. Starfall will also return to its previous design, used from Wrath through Warlords. Instead of needing to telegraph the affected area, Balanced Roots again call down waves of stars which strike the surrounding ground while they ru stand, run, or flap for its duration. Yeah, Balanced Roots! Oh, that's awesome. Thank thank you. That's great. That's fun. I, I Yeah, nice. That'll be cool. It just goes around them. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, I know some people will be like, "Oh, but I want it. I want it to be targeted and, and all that." But I think that sounds. I think that sounds pretty great. Uh, Feral. You don't have much there. Fierce felines will see their blood talents talent reimagined, tapping into their primal power. When feral druids use shred, rake, and ferocious bite in quick succession, the damage of their next rip will increase dramatically. So just more combo play. Oops. Uh, let's look at. Oh, stop it. Uh, Guardian. Guardian Druids in the Shadowlands can once again embrace, or bear hug, their brutish side with Berserk, reducing the cooldowns of Mangle, Thrash, Growl, and Frenzied Reju uh, Regeneration substantially, while also having the, having the cost of Iron Fur. Renewal also returns as a talent choice, instantly healing the Guardian Druid for a fair bit of their maximum health. So again, it sounds like they're making uh, tanks a little bit more offensive, which um, sounds awesome to me. That sounds that sounds great. Um, I'm all I'm all I'm all for it. Uh, for Restoration, Swift Mend will return to its historic functionality of consuming a heal over time effect on the target, but with a substantially reduced cooldown and cost. Oh, okay, so it won't do... That's a that's a pretty big change back, actually. And for moments of special need, the classic Restoration staple, Nature's Swiftness, will again allow a regrowth, rebirth, or entangling roots to be cast instantly. Yeah! We get NS in retail, like live... Oh, man, that's a... Yeah. Oh. Can't wait. Can't wait. Uh, communing with the wild spirits in Death's Realm has reawakened Restoration Druid's inert knowledge to cast Nourish, a talent option that heals an ally for a significant amount. Nourish receives triple the boon from Mastery Harmony, which increases the healing for each active Restoration Heal Over Time effect. So we get Nourish. Nice, Resto Druids. 
Um, I'm definitely, so as, as we go through this, please, uh, please keep in mind that, like, I do play, uh, every class at some level, um, but I, 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 I'm not familiar with a lot of the really, really in-depth stuff, so, um, just, just keep that in mind as we go through this, please. Um, Hunters. Masters of the wilderness, hunters draw on a variety of tools such as specialized ammunition and traps that alter the environment to their advantage. So those who master the strategy of chaining their abilities and coordinating opportune attacks with their bestial companions will unleash their full lethal potential. In general, we feel the core hunter class kit is well realized across all of their specs, yet each plays in a unique fun way. As a result, hunters core damage rotations will remain familiar in Shadowlands, but several iconic abilities will return. And many, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually glad to hear this. Um, I think that, I think that, uh, right now hunters, I think play really well. Um, and, and I hope that, uh, they, they don't change it too much. And it sounds like, it sounds like potentially they won't. Uh, general changes, arcane shots, eyes of the beast, hunters mark, kill shot, scare beast, and tranquilizing shot will be available for all hunters to use regardless of their spec. To prepare for the fight ahead, all hunters will have their stable size significantly increased yeah to hold many companions including the new creatures they discover and tame in the ethereal wilds of the shadowlands yeah oh yeah give me more give me more pets please uh arcane shot being baseline for all hunters i feel is good hunter's mark coming back sounds great and kill shot i mean you can't complain with an execute right uh all right let's look at beastmaster my favorite my favorite hunter uh, a beast mastery's hunter's strength comes from the bond with their companions who will ruthlessly fight at their side and savagely tear apart enemies. Bloodshed is a new talent that beast master hunters can teach their companions, commanding the beast to tear into their target. The unfortunately quarry will bleed significantly, causing them to take more damage from their pet. Beautiful. Uh, Scent of Blood talent is being reimagined. The passive now activates when Bestial Wrath is used, granting two charges of Barb Shop to bloody a target and empower their bonded beast to take down threat. Oh, that's great. So it'll it'll automatically fire uh, two, char two charges of Barb Shot, which does send your pets into a frenzy for those of you that don't uh, play uh, Beastmaster. Venomous Bite takes the place of Spitting Cobra and comes with a twist. When Bestial Wrath ends, a Cobra will come to aid the hunter in combat. The Serpent's power will increase based on how many times they used Cobra Shot during Bestial Wrath. Well, that sounds neat. That sounds fun. I wonder how strong that will actually be. I don't know. It sounds cool, though. Marksman. Master Sharpshooters. The most boring spec. You're welcome. Uh, can empower kill shot with Deadeye, a new talent that lets the hunter store two charges of kill shot. It also makes aim shot recharge faster for a short time whenever kill shot is used. Okay. Hmm. Binding Shackles is a new passive talent that causes enemies rooted by their baseline binding shot to deal less damage to the hunter for a short time after being released from the root. That could be fun, especially in something like Torghast. Volley is a new talent that enables the Marksman Hunter to rain arrows down on a targeted area over a short period of time. Didn't we have that? It also empowers the Hunter with the Trick Shots buff, causing all their aim shots and rapid fire abilities to ricochet and hit up to five additional targets for half the damage for the entire duration of Volley. So you use Volley, it rains down over an area, but you can also use, so it's not a channel, you're not channeling it, you can use other, uh, you can also use other things like aim shot and rapid fire, which will ricochet. So they, look at that, Marksman. You can actually do AOE now. Survival. To take down the horrors waiting for them in Shadowlands, survival hunters are refining their skills and improving their weapons and gadgets. Expect to see damage increases for Hydra's Bite, Butchery, Steel Trap, Tip of the Spear, and Flanking Strike, along with a reduction in the focus cost for Chakrams, all designed to help them best the beasts they'll encounter in Death's Realm. Uh, so not a huge deal with, with the way survival is going to play. We'll just see more damage coming out of them. Um, from everyone that I've heard that plays survival, says that it's a lot of work for not a lot of output uh, comparatively to other hunters, right? So I'm curious to see if the if up uh, the damage increases for Hydro Spite and Butchery and stuff. That's huge, right? Um, and Flanking Strike. Uh, maybe that'll maybe that'll be enough to make people be like, yeah, it's worth working harder, right? All right, next we have Mage. 
Mages manipulate many schools of magic, but focus their power on one in particular. We feel it's important for every mage to have access to spells from all of the schools, especially for utility purposes, even if their damage rotation draws primarily from a single source. We're making more spells from all three schools class-wide. In addition, we felt that the Arcane Mage damage rotation lacked a focal moment that results in a big payoff. As such, the combat rotation is undergoing a significant redesign that looks to add this while retaining the overall flow and feel of the spec. That might make Arcane Mages super happy, and it might make them very sad. Uh, <laughs> Arcane Explosion. Fire Blast, Frostbolt, and Mirror Images are once again available to all specs in Fire Ward and Frost Ward. Uh, return to bolster mages defensives. Alter Time also comes back from the past. Oh, uh, Alter Time was... I liked Alter Time. Allowing mages of all specs to show off their temporal mastery. When cast, this spell gives the mage the ability to return to their initial location with the same health and mana after casting it a second time or after a short duration. I'm so, so glad Alter Time is coming back. I thought it was a lot of fun. All mages can also learn a new talent, Focus Magic, which grants an ally a slight bonus to their critical, uh, spell critical, str oh yeah, uh, critical hit chance. In addition, when the ally critically hits with a spell, the Arcane Mage receives the same boon for a, oh, that's awesome. So Arcane benefits from Focus Magic more than any other mage. Uh, that's awesome. All right, so Arcane, Wild Ante Magic wins through the Shadowlands, and Azeroth's most chaotic magic wielders can't wait to channel it. Clear casting now has an additional stack, rendering arcane mages even more capable of decimating their foes. Mastery Savant now extends its damage increasing properties beyond arcane blast and barrage to all spells. Nice. Touch of the Magi moves from its current place as a talent to a baseline arcane ability. Nice. Allowing wielders to target an enemy that will take an additional burst of damage from all arcane spells and spread that damage to surrounding enemies. So basically the, yeah, that's awesome. That's great. Enlightened is a new talent that rewards mana management. While the Arcane Mage's mana is above a certain threshold, it empowers all arcane damage dealt by a moderate amount. When below, it significantly increases mana regeneration. That's awesome! Fire Mages now have more control over how and when they spread their ignite with a redesigned mastery. Ignite. Fire Blast now serves as a catalyst. When used against an enemy who's ignited, it spreads to up to eight enemies close to your target. So it's a, a living bomb, but just it, you can just spread it that quickly. Beautiful. Fire Blast. When used against an enemy who is ignited, so you don't want to start with Fire Blast. Nice. Fire Mage's talents are also getting a few updates to help promote different playstyles based on the situation they face. Blast Wave now does more damage, and an increased slow duration keeps uh, helps keep enemies at bay while melting their health away. I love some of the flavor text that they've used to write this blog post. It's great. For mages who want to, who want to watch the world burn, the cooldown reduction provided by kindling is increased, allowing the mage to get their combustion back faster for maximum critical strike goodness. The damage bonus that Pyroclasm grants is also being increased, making the reward for casting the next non-instant Pyroblast much more satisfying. Give me all of the Pyroblast, please. Nothing feels better than a big, meaty, big, meaty blast. Don't say it. Don't, don't. Don't say it. Uh, Frost. With the addition of mirror images and alter time, Frost Mages will have some cool new abilities to weave into their gameplay. One of the more noticeable changes in Shadowlands is the update to Flurry's Winter's Chill debuff. Previously, Winter's Chill was tied to Flurry's Movement Speed debuff, which created tight windows and required distance checks to achieve the maximum damage bonuses. Moving into Shadowlands, Winter's Chill is now a much longer debuff, nice, that causes uh, Frost Mages' next two spells to treat the target as frozen a debuff that increases the critical hit chance from the Frost Mage and their allies against the target. That's great. That's a great change. That's awesome. I can't... Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, that's really good. The next two spells to target, the treat the target as frozen. So you can do... you. That just allows for a little bit more things that you can respond to, right, during that window. Uh, all right, Monk. Uh, we are about halfway through, folks. Uh, in preparation for their perilous journey into the Shadowlands, Mucks return to the Peak of Serenity to study, train, and hone their skills. Several abilities from the original version of the class return to all specs to reinforce their identity as Masters of Martial Combat. In addition, each specialization will receive a unique Celestial Cooldown ability, reconnecting them with the mystic nature of Pandaria. Yay. Some mist action. All right, so Expel Harm, Fortifying Brew, Spinning Crane Crick, and Touch of Death, Spinning Crane Crick, and Touch of Death are now now available uh, for all monks to use. 
Additionally, Touch of Death returns to its original design, killing an enemy with less health than the monk. Each specialization also gains a unique benefit by dealing damage with Touch of Death. Yeah! Touch of Death was so fun. Uh, all three specs will also be able to summon their Celestial to the battlefield with Invoke Zuen, Invoke Nu Zhao, Invoke Yulon, uh, which all of these were talents, but now you can act that. Great. That should be baseline for the spec that you chose. Brewmaster. Oh, wow. Okay. Stalwart Brewmaster monks are prepared to do all they can to restore balance and can again choose between two one-handed weapons. Some fisticuffs, man. Or one two-handed weapon to subdue their foes. Good. No longer are you tied to just a staff. Brewmaster monks also have a returning passive shuffle. Yeah! Which increases the amount of physical damage that's staggered when the monk uses one of several abilities, including blackout kick, uh, keg smash, and spinning crane kick. Celestial brew is a new ability that absorbs damage based on the attack power. And Brewmaster monks can once again challenge their chosen target with Clash, a returning ability that causes both the monk and their target bull rush each other and, at the epicenter of the conflict, root their opponent for a short duration. That's gonna be fun. All Brewmaster monks will be able to use Invoke Nezao uh, to help shoulder Brewmaster's stagger damage. Also deals additional damage based on stagger damage purified. For Brewmaster monks, not only does Touch of Death instantly kill any creature with less health than the monk, but it will also clear remaining stagger damage. That's huge. Brewmasters can imbue their brews with divine powers via a new talent, Celestial Flames. Drinking brews has a moderate chance to grant Celestial Flames, which slightly increases Breath of Fire's damage reduction and spreads its periodic damage effects to targets struck with Spinning Crane Kick. Exploding Keg returns as a talent, immolating enemies on impact and binding them for a short period of time. Guys, this is sounding, uh, these are sounding so good. Mistweaver, all Mistweaver monks will be able to use inv Invoke L Yulan who heals allies with Celestial Breath and spawns Healing Spheres for nearby allies. Touch of Death now instantly kills any creature with less health and will spawn Healing Spheres for their allies. I love that Touch of Death has a secondary effect for everybody. Invoke Chiji the Red Crane returns as a talent choice, strengthening their physical damage moderately and healing their allies for part of the damage inflicted on enemies. GG also makes them immune to movement impairing abilities so they can constantly be on the move during combat. That's going to be very, very strong. Very, very strong, especially when, uh, you know, um, uh, Leaden Foot is introduced as a new Mythic Plus affix. Please don't do that, Blizzard. Please, 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 please. Windwalker. Like their Brewmaster Brethren, Windwalker monks will once again be able to choose between two-handed weapons or one two-handed weapon in their fight to restore balance. Yeah, Windwalkers. All Windwalker monks will be able to call upon a powerful ally with Invoke Zuin. Zuin will fight by their side and assault enemies with Tiger Lightning, dealing additional damage to targets the monk has recently attacked. Touch of Death now instantly kills any creature and will spawn Cheese Spheres that the Windwalker can consume to perform devastating blows. In the Shadowlands, Wild Gods freely wander the woods of Ardenwald, and their magic awakens Windwalker monks' knowledge to perform Dance of Chiji. This new passive talent has a moderate chance to make the next spinning crane kick free to use and deal a significant amount of extra damage to all its strikes. That's amazing. That's awesome. Guys, I, I really... I can't wait to see how these actually function when we when we actually get to play it, get in and, and play these, because right now... Um, Right now, this sounds this sounds great. This sounds awesome. I think most of these changes sound good, right? Like that's what's kind of crazy. None of them, I'm like, oh no, don't remove. I mean, we'll have to see what ends up, how these actually end up playing, right? All right. Next, we have my my main uh, paladins, devoted servants of the light. Paladins tap into its holy power to protect their friends and vanquish their enemies. In the original version of the game, Paladins had several categories of spells that transcended their specs, such as seals, blessings, and auras. While we feel that not all of these categories of spells make sense for the modern game, having those categories defined the Paladin class agreed. We want to restore that feeling of shared spell categories with the unification of the Paladin resource system. Unification so we all get holy power and the restoration of several iconic abilities, including auras. While a few of these abilities are situational utility, they play well into the Paladin's archetype as a Holy Avenger and Bane of the Undead. Yes, please, and thank you. Blessing of Sacrifice, Hammer of Wrath, Sense Undead, Shield of the Righteous, Turn Evil, and Word of Glory will be available to all Paladins regardless of their spec. Yeah! Blessing of Sacrifice in particular 
as Rhett, that would be uh, so fun uh, to, to... Oh, yeah. And Word of Glory. Mm -hmm. Holy Power returns as a resource for all Paladins to use. Yes. To fight off attackers and defend their allies. Abilities such as Creator Strike and Hammer of Wrath grant Holy Power on use, which can then be spent to call upon the most powerful forms of the Light, including Word of Glory and Shield of the Righteous to vanquish foes and protect allies. As Champions of the Light, all Paladins can use powerful auras to safeguard and enhance their allies. Concentration Aura returns to all Paladins, reducing the duration of interrupts and silences. A redesigned Retribution Aura allows Paladins to avenge fallen allies with a short burst of Avenging Wrath, giving these Holy Warriors the strength to vanquish evil or keep their remaining allies on their feet. So every time that someone dies, uh, Retribution Aura will, will activate and you'll get... That's cool. Crusader and Devotion Auras are also available to all Paladins. Yes! All Paladins will also have access to more talents that allow them to manipulate and spend Holy Power. The Divine Purpose talent will be available for all Paladins to select and is standardized for all specs, allowing their abilities to spend Holy Power to have a decent chance to make the next Holy Power spending ability free and increase its damage or healing output. Holy Avenger uh, allows the generation of huge bursts of Holy Power in a short window, while Seraphim allows the Paladins to spend their Holy Power to increase their secondary stats for a moderate amount of time. I'm really glad Seraphim's not leaving. It's one of my favorite talents. I know that, that, that it's like a boring one that some people might not like. I enjoy it. I think it's a good time. The Azerite trait... <gasps> No way! The Azerite trait Glimmer of Light moves to a space in the level 50 talent row, competing with powerful existing options such as Beacon of Faith. While Holy, Holy Paladin's Aura talent row has been replaced by the class-wide Aura bar, Aura Mastery continues to give Holy Paladin's unique ability to give any Aura a special empowerment. Guys, Glimmerdins are here to stay. I had a... I, my alerts are still... Thank you for subscribing. <laughs> uh, all right, so that's great. Glimmerdens are here to stay. Uh, that's that's exciting stuff. All right, uh, protection. To better uphold their oath to protect the innocent, protection paladins now exude Shining Light, a new passive that makes the next cast of Word of Glory free whenever judgment critically strikes a target, enabling protection paladins to shield themselves and defend their allies from attackers. What? A free word of glory anytime judgment crits? My judgments crit all the time right now. That's going to be... Oh, imagine the off-healing we can do. Paladins, mandatory. Retribution, baby. The darkest places within the Shadowlands inspire Retribution Paladins to perform valorous acts in the name of the Light. Wake of Ashes is available to all Retribution Paladins instead of needing... Good. It's not a talent because you always pick it, right? allowing these holy warriors to vanquish evil with a blow so powerful it damages all foes close to its impact and reduces any survivor's movement speed significantly. Demon and undead enemies are further crippled with a substantial stun when struck with the ability. Empyrean Power, which was a trait, will be available as a talent, giving Crusader Strike a moderate chance to make the next Divine Storm cost no holy power and increase the damage dealt by a significant amount. Absolutely wonderful. Can't wait to see those implemented. These are, I, I, guys, I'm, I'm actually loving all of the, what I've seen so far. Like, actually. Um, yeah. All right. We're on Priest now. Uh, just uh, five more. In recent expansion, Priest specializations became polarized around these two ideas. With Holy and Shadow tapping only into their respective schools of power. In Shadowlands, we want to move back to a world where even though a Holy Priest excels in the connection with the Light, they are still able to harness some Shadow magic. Likewise, Shadow Priests will also be able to focus on harnessing... Uh, void energies, but still be able to draw upon the light. General changes, we have Mind Blast, Mind Soothe, Power Infusion, yeah! Shadow Word Death and Shadow Word Pain will be available for all priests to use. Beautiful. Beautiful. Disc Priests are masters of balancing the forces of light and shadow, and the changes in Shadowlands cover both ends of that spectrum. Light's Caress is a new ability that the most powerful disciplines, uh, disciples of the light can use, enabling disciplined priests to heal their allies by blessing them with power word barrier and healing them again if they're still under the barrier when it expires nice that's so now it's a two for one a damage reduction and a heal disciplined priests who dare to lean into darker magics can learn shadow covenant this reimagined talent instantly deal uh, instantly heals the chosen hero and four other injured allies within a small area moderately increases the damage the priest deals for a short period of time during which they cannot cast any holy spells 
New to Discipline in Shadowlands, Mind Blast will provide a powerful burst of damage and atonement healing along with an absor absorption shield for a significant mana cost. Mind Blast will provide damage and atonement healing along with an absorption shield. So you can use Shadow Covenant and then just blast with Mind with with Mind Blast. Like set up atonement, Shadow Covenant, and just spam Mind Blast and just destroy. That sounds fun. With the protective veil of the Shadowlands shattered, the grace of the no oh, there's some things there. The protective veil of the Shadowlands, the grace of the Naru has slipped through and can be channeled by their most faithful. Circle of Healing is now a baseline spell for all holy priests, freeing them up to master a new talent, Prayer Circle. Prayer Circle empowers a Circle of Healing, reducing the cast time of Prayer of Healing moderately for a short period of time when cast. Okay. Well, that's a little... Okay. Uh, in the realms of death, Shadow Priests will learn how to ascend to the peak of their power with a new talent, Death and Madness. Each time a target dies after being slain with Shadow Word Death, the Shadow Priest gains a substantial amount of insanity over a few seconds. In addition, Shadow Word Death resets, instantly able to use it on their next victim. Yeah. Surrender to Madness returns with a wicked twist. On use, the Shadow Priest instantly gains a huge spike of insanity and casts Void Eruption on the target. Over a long duration, insanity generating abilities grant 100% more insanity and you can cast your spells while moving. However, the power comes at a terrible price. If the caster fails to slay their target during the buff window, they succumb to the shadows and die. So a little bit different, but uh, still pretty much the same as what it has been, right? I think the biggest new thing is instantly gain the insanity and void eruption instantly gets cast. So you get like a huge initial burst of insanity as soon as you use it. Rogue. Rogues have always had a broad utility toolkit for damage control and survivability, but during the development of Legion, we felt a need to distinguish each of the specs from each other and give them a unique identity. This resulted in us dividing up much of the core rogue kit amongst the three specs making each feel a bit thinner than before. For Shadowlands, we're working to correct this problem by restoring many iconic rogue traits to the base class by preserving much of what's novel about each specialization. The three, th three specs of rogues share the teachings they've learned while mastering their vicious skills. Assassins teach the basics of poisons, allowing subtlety and outlaw to once again coat their blades with instant, crippling, and numbing poisons. Rogues are now even, even more deadly. The Lost Art of a Well-Placed Shiv in a Target's Side allows a concentrated version of poison to infect the target for a short duration. Pickpocket will frequently uncover new ingredients that can be mixed into their Crimson Vial, augmenting its power the next time the rogue... That's awesome! That's cool. Actually, gameplay reasons to use Pickpocket sounds super cool to me. Assassination Rogues continue their mastery of poisons with the returning Shiv ability, providing amount of increased nature damage on the victim, mirroring the gameplay of Toxic Blade, uh, which is no longer, it, what is a talent now, it won't be now uh, in Shadowlands. Their poisons will be stronger and apply to their blades faster than other rogues, along with always infecting targets when attacking from stealth. Assassination once again has access to ambush as an option for their initial attack from stealth. Nice. Blindside talent has changed to give the assassin a chance to allow access to ambush even while out of stealth, with a higher chance on lower health targets. Shiv gets access to another uh, to another and upgrade through Toxic Blade, reducing its cool. Oh, so their Toxic Blade will still be there, but it's a new form, reducing its cooldown to provide more frequent assaults of increased nature damage. Ever resourceful and hungry for an edge, outlaw rogues have traded in the combo point requirement of roll the bones for a. I've traded in the combo point requirement of Roll of Bones. Yes. For a modifiable cooldown, which can be manipulated to line up with their staggering finishing moves, Frantic Combat will reduce the cooldown of Roll of Bones through Restless Blades by spending combo points. Kidney Shot returns to Outlaw's toolkit, with Between the Eyes making their foes more susceptible to their critical strikes instead of stunning them. Ah! Okay, so Between the Eyes will put a debuff on them that will allow you to... Nice. So Kidney Shot is what you'll use now for stuns instead of Between the Eyes. Evasion Returns is Outlaw's defensive ability, with Repost becoming an upgraded talent option. Retractable Hook now also increases the speed of the Rogue's Grappling Hook, getting them where they need to be faster than ever. Increases the speed of the Rogue's Grappling Hook, just like the movement of the, of the animation? Subtlety. Always looking for an advantage in combat, all Subtlety Rogues have mastered the art of Find Weakness. Uh, which is not a, 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 yeah it used to be a talent they don't 
need it that anymore. Attacking from stealth and other abilities allows the rogue to bypass their target's armor, but also causes additional shadow damage when they are struck by an eviscerate. Find weakness can also mark a large number of targets when needed to set up their new area of effect uh, finisher, Shadow Vault, which also assaults targets with their find weakness for additional shadow damage. Shadow Dance has gained the power of Dark Shadow to increase all damage active at the cost of less frequent dancing. Rupture returns a subtlety's damage over time, bleed finishing move, instead of the shadowy night blade. However, they'll still have access to movement speed reduction and healing reduction through wound and crippling poisons. Does that make sense? All right, moving on to shamans. Whew, let's see what this one's got. As a class, shaman have long had some of the most distinctive categories of spells in the games. Totems, shocks, shields, weapon imbues, chain spells. But over time, some of them have become the domain of specific specs. In Shadowlands, we're giving these types of abilities back to the entire class. As a player levels up, they'll be exposed to the many ways a Shaman can interact with the elements to overcome challenges. Over time, the Shaman will discover which of these tools they have the strongest affinity for, and which abilities they'd like to focus on as they master the elemental forces. In Shadowlands, Chain Heal, Chain Lightning, Healing Stream Totem, Flame Tongue Weapon, Flame Shock, Frost Shock, and Lightning Shield will be available for all Shamans to use regardless of spec. Searing Totem also returns as an ability for all Shamans to use. Uh, which bombards nearby enemies with sh uh, fireballs for a short duration. Nice. All right. Looks like we have a big, big thing here. Elemental, the Maelstrom resource and accompanying bar have been removed, returning Elemental Shamans to their former cooldown management playstyle. When we added Maelstrom to Shamans in Legion, we wanted to improve affordance around the use of Earthshock and Earthquake in their rotation, but the addition of the resource had the side effect of converting the spec into one with Builder Spender abilities, which comes with certain built-in expectations on the payoff of its spenders. When an elemental shaman presses Earthshock and it consumes most of their resource, the expectation is that this moment is the peak of their rotation and there should be a big payoff. But we want the focus of the rotation to be about managing your flame shock debuff on multiple targets to maximize the potential of lava bursts through lava surge procs. Lightning Bolt and consequently Earthshock are meant to be flavorful but secondary part of the single target rotation. As such, we are returning to a design that relies on building stacks of fulmination to determine when to insert Earthshock into the rotation. Similarly, Chain Lightning and stacks of Seismic Thunder will serve to enable Earthquake. Echoing Shock is a new talent that blasts the target for significant damage and, make, and makes it so the Shaman's next healing or damaging spell casts a second time shortly afterward without costing additional resources. Um, I am I, elemental shaman is one of the classes that I know like the least about. So I am curious what what if you're if you do play an elemental shaman, uh, let me know what you think of this. Um, this sounds like one of the biggest revamps uh, or redesigns of a class so far in in that I've read in Shadowlands. So uh, just just keeping that in mind. It looks like holy shit. It looks like uh, it looks like shamans are getting a lot of attention in Shadowlands. So congrats if you like this stuff. Um, you know. Let me know. Let me know if you're a shaman player and what you think of this. As with elemental, maelstrom has uh, maelstrom has been removed. Enhancement will return to a spec based on managing a number of cooldown abilities with high points built around repeat cost cast of storm strike. In Shadowlands, enhancement shamans who change certain abilities in combat will see their efforts rewarded when the time is right, and the elements will it. With the capacity to unleash a powerful cooldown dealing devastating damage, Maelstrom Weapon returns, giving each attack a chance to grant a stack of a buff that, a buff that can be used to make your next healing or damage dealing spell instant. Flame Tongue Weapon and Wind Fury Weapon can uh, once again be applied. Yeah! Wind Fury, baby! Uh, <laughs> can once again be applied to Enhancement Shaman's weapons, imbuing them with the power of the elements to suit the situation at hand. The passive bonus provided by Hailstrom has been redesigned so that it resets the cooldown of Flame Shock and Frost Shock when a Shaman uses Storm Strike. Searing Assault metamorphosizes into a powerful fire attack, striking the foe for significant fire damage and causing their Searing Totem to cast incredibly fast. It also triggers Flame Shock to repeatedly dish out its damage over time burn effects to melt enemies. Haha! <laughs> nice. Overcharge now generates five stacks of Maelstrom weapon instantly and another stack every second for a short duration. Stormkeeper will make your next two lightning bolts or chain lightning spells instant cast and deal bonus damage. It also benefits from Maelstrom weapon lowering Stormkeeper's cast time so the Enhancement Shaman can chain powerful abilities together to pummel down foes quickly. Elemental Blast is now a talent option for uh, Enhancement Shamans. 
giving this melee-focused spec access to a powerful spell to destroy foes from a distance. It also benefits from Maelstrom Weapon's effect, which can reduce its cast time or even cause it to become cast, uh, instant cast. All of this, to me, makes um, makes Enhancement feel much more active, um, more so than it already is, with a lot more management going on, a lot more uh, procs. Um, it might be fun. It might end up being, monot like, not monotonous, uh, micromanage-y? I'm not sure. <laughs> All of this? Resto. Once Restoration Shamans step into the realm of the Ancestral Spirits, they will find new ways to tap into the element's power. Earth Shields can now be used by all Restoration Shamans without needing to select it as a talent. Surge of the Earth is a new talent that expends a few charges of Earth Shield to significantly heal the current Earth Shield target and several nearby allies. Well, there you go, Resto. What do you think of the changes? Uh, that's not a lot, but I'm sure we'll see uh, how that rounds out their kit a little bit. All right, we got two more. It's been a long video. Holy shit, are you still here? Uh, Warlock. When designing Warlocks for Shadowlands, we had a few core goals. As part of our effort to distinguish classes as a whole, we're bringing back curses. Yes! Uh, satisfying to use in special cases, but not something they should feel obligated to use when fighting every enemy. Abilities like Demonic Circle offer unique ways to interact with the world and combat spaces. Spec-wise, we're making relatively minimal changes to Demonology and Destruction as we feel their core rotations and talent options fit well with our goals for Shadowlands. With Affliction, we're making larger changes to bring the, spe the spec's gameplay more towards managing damage over time effects rather than saving up for a major burst moment. Okay. All Warlocks will be able to afflict their foes with Curse of Tongues, Curse of Recklessness, Curse of weak Weakness, and Curse of Doom. In addition, Warlocks can manipulate space with Demonic Circle. Tongue Tide is a new talent that empowers spells lobbed at targets suffering from Curse of Tongues, causing them to seal the victim from receiving healing effects, forcing them to succumb to all incoming damage for a moderate amount of time. That sounds super fun. Cool. P -p 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 -p? You, you want to puff a puff with that? Affliction. Unstable Affliction sacrifices its stacking effect to torture its victim longer and all without consuming a soul shard. Soul Rack is a new channeled ability that ravages the foe's spirit, uh, empowering Warlock's periodic spells to deal significant amount of bonus damage to an enemy afflicted by this dark magic. Affliction Warlocks can exasperate the malaise they sow with Malefic Rapture, a new ability that causes their periodic spells to tick significantly faster while the victim is suffering from the malady. New talents will be available for Affliction Warlocks to more effectively drain away the life from their victims. Sow the Seeds will now embed two additional seeds into nearby enemies, which combined with the new Malefic Rupture can make for explosive results. Some of these aff Affliction changes sound super, super fun. I'm really, really bad at dot management, but um, this sounds fun. Doom is now available for Affliction Warlocks to use and deals more damage with shorter damage over time duration. If Doom kills the target, there's a slight chance the Warlock will summon a Doom Guard to fight for them for a short period of time. That's cool. I like that. That's just a nice touch, right? I don't know what that will mean for numbers stuff, but in imagine in an AoE situation, you get a ton of, of Doom Guard procs. How many Doom Guards do you actually end up having, right? That, that might end up being cool. Demonology. Dark Pact will now scale with spell power to deal more damage than ever before. Demonology Warlocks will also discover that the Dark Fury talent has a new effect. In addition to the cooldown reduction it provides, it empowers Shadow Fury by increasing its area effect as the spell crashes down on uh, crashes down on in the battle. Uh, crashes down on and in and in. Nice. Okay. So like they said, they said that it was wasn't gonna be a huge one, but Dark Pact scaling with spell power yeah, sounds pretty good. Destruction. Fire and Brimstone is getting an upgrade, as it now generates two Soul Shard Fragments for each additional enemy struck by the Warlock's Empowered Incinerate. Great. Just more, more resource. Let's go. Cool. Warlocks, what do you think? And last but not least, my friends, we have the Warriors. Clad in heavy armor and wielding brutal weapons, it's often forgotten that Warriors are also hybrids, equally adept at dealing damage, protecting their allies on the front lines. We want to restore utility to all three Warrior specs by bringing back many iconic abilities that are useful across the game. In addition, several talents have undergone revision for each spec to increase build diversity and gameplay variety. Great. Great. Execute, yes. Hamstring, ignore pain, shield block, shield slam, slam, spell reflection, and whirlwind are now available to all warriors. 
Challenging Shout and Intervene are returning, and all warriors can use them to turn the tide of batter, battle. Rah, rah, rah. Shattering Throw is also back. It will deal devastating damage against foes protected by an absorption shield. Just an absorption shield? Or also like a paladin bubble? Please don't. T please don't. Uh, double Time and War Machine can now be utilized by all specs as a talent. Double Time as a talent is cool. Uh, all right, so for arms, the armies of Maldraxxus have inspired arm warriors to return to several key martial tactics and abilities. Piercing Howls can now be used by arms warriors, giving them another way to stop enemies in their tracks by dazing them and significantly reducing their movement speed for a short duration. Cleave as a talent has been redesigned. After striking three targets with Whirlwind, the warrior can use Cleave to strike all enemies in front of the warrior, inflicting deep wounds, a scaling bleed effect. The Deadly Calm talent has also been redesigned and will completely remove the rage cost of the next four abilities and includes a passive effect that increases the warrior's maximum rage by a moderate amount. Dreadnought now takes on the Seismic Wave Azerite trait. Nice. Empowering Overpower to deal damage to enemies in a line. When Overpower hits two targets with Sweeping Strikes, Dreadnought causes two devastating seismic waves. That's awesome. I love that they're baking some of the Azerite traits into abilities. Figured they would, but it's good to have that confirmed and to see that. Because some Azerite traits, like Imperium Power, is great, right? Fury Warriors will find themselves at home in the Shadowlands and will be able to perform feats in battle that were previously unfathomable. What a sweet word. Fervor of Battle is a new talent where the warrior loses themselves to their blood lust, uh, bloodthirst during Whirlwind and also slams their primary target and gains additional rage. Warriors will also be able to learn Onslaught in which an enraged warrior brutally attacks an enemy for a large amount of damage and generates some rage. Yes. Frothing Berserker has been reimagined. Now, when the warrior reaches 100 rage, they gain haste and movement speed over a few seconds. Wrecking Ball returns as a talent, which gives the warrior a moderate chance for the next whirlwind to deal a devastating amount of damage. Fresh Meat now causes Bloodthirst to always enrage you the first time you strike a target with blood uh, with Bloodthirst. Nice. Protection. And their Shining Armor. Protection warriors are seen as stalwart defenders, but behind the shield stands a cold-blooded tactician. Yes! Protection Warriors can now tap into their Brutal side with, the more, with some reimagined talents. Best Serve Cold increases the damage of Revenge, with the damage, damage bonus increasing significantly after a successful dodge or parry has made Revenge cost no rage. So you get a free Revenge that does more damage every time that you dodge or parry. That is... Oh, man. What a cool, like, class fantasy thing. Oh, man. Menace has also been redesigned with this theme in mind, empowering intimidating shout to call all enemies to cower in fear for a substantial amount of time, knocking back those that are not the primary target. Oh, okay. Indomitable will passively increase the warrior's maximum health by a moderate amount, and spending rage while the ability is active will heal their wounds. Never surrender increases ignore pain by either a moderate or significant amount based on missing health. That one's a little a little less fun. Uh, but I really like the idea that they're, they're tacticians that are doing it. Shadowlands class updates are still in development and subject to change. All right, so whew, that was a long one, my friends. That was a long, long look at these abilities. Um, I didn't see many issues. Uh, I really, really like where they're going with this, and I can't wait to actually get into the game and see what these abilities do. Uh, we'll have more in-depth looks at each of the classes and the changes that are happening when we have the actual alpha or beta uh, in front of us. Whenever those are active, uh, that will be something that I'll be looking at is how each class plays and um, and how differently they play uh, on on, re on uh, BFA right now compared to Shadowlands. And if it's more fun, at the end of the day, I, I think the, the fun aspect of some of these classes is, is what matters. As a Paladin main, I am very, very excited for these changes. I think that the Protection one in particular, I am also a tank main. Uh, and I will say, a lot of the tank specs sound super fun. I feel like they are really, really uh, focusing on the idea of uh, offensive, um, offensive smart uses, right? Like... Like the, like the warrior, for instance, being able to see something happening on the battlefield and adapt to what they're using, right? Best serve cold, the, the revenge thing. Anytime you parry or dodge, you revenge. It feels good, right? You move, you cha. I, I love it. I think it's great. Uh, Brewmaster has a ton of things that they're going to be able to use in their kit. Protection, the next word of glory is free whenever judgment critically strikes. It means that you don't have to lose, like, even just... 
having word of glory is is great as a as a protection paladin uh as a when i play ret i always go word of glory because it is just so strong and can really really help out your healers in a situation and to be able to get free word of glories yeah it'll cost a global but like free word of glories uh could be super super strong i can't wait to see uh how some of these classes stack up even vengeance the redesign i all of these sound uh super super fun to me and i literally every class feels or sounds like they will have more they'll have stuff to play with it's not just about numbers it's about do i have something i can use in a scenario and it feels like to me at least that they are or at least right now that they are really really looking at um every single class and offering that that option to to be able to respond to whatever is in front of you at any given moment I think that's great uh and i can't i can't wait to see how that actually goes i'm not expecting all of these abilities to make it into shadowlands right um there might be some that they go you know what it it's not working as intended or it doesn't work with our current view of the game it doesn't work with the way the game has progressed right um and they, they might decide to remove it i do like the change to shattering throw that it doesn't remove the absorption shield it just does damage on the other side of the absorption shield at least as far as i can tell that'll be something that will have to be checked but um yeah i'm i'm right now i'm i'm very happy with with a lot of what they've said i'm i'm very very happy with it and the class philosophy sounds really good to me as well um having having your class be more important than your spec i think specs would, were great for legion you had the mage tower you had the um you had the the artifact weapons it was it was awesome um but without those things there spec importance doesn't really matter right you know what i'm saying um without that other content that you you give you give a anyways uh thank you guys so much for watching this video it was uh pretty long if you made it to the end please let me know uh if you if you did and what you what you're thinking right now of of the class changes again super into it i'm very excited uh anyways i love you guys thank you so much for hanging out and checking out my uh my my shadowlands alpha uh pre-alpha coverage uh hopefully see you guys soon uh shadowlands will uh the alpha will be out this week i'll see you guys there thank you never give up never surrender goodbye everyone